In this demonstration, we're going to show how you can use optimization algorithms to tune the transient response of a hydraulic valve. Here's our situation. We have a hydraulic data sheet from a manufacturer that has a number of transient response requirements. We need to find parameter values so that the res results of our simulation match those transient response characteristics. To do this, we're going to use SimHydraulics and Simulink Design Optimization to tune the parameters of a valve actuator model. We're going to set up the model to tune to two of these characteristics, the 0 to 100% step and the plus 90% to minus 90% step. When we first run the simulation, we'll see that the simulation results look like this. However, if we compare this to the manufacturer's required characteristic, we can see that they don't match. The 0 to 100% step needs to have a rise time of 130 milliseconds, and the plus 90 to minus 90% step needs to have a rise time of 170 milliseconds. In order to find the correct parameter values, we're going to let Simulink Design Optimization automatically tune the parameter values until the results of the simulation meet these requirements. I'll now switch over to the model so that you can see how this is done. Here is the model that we're working with. You can see that we're going to excite a proportional servo valve actuator with a 0 to 100% step and a plus 90 to a minus 90% step. If we run the simulation, you can see what the results look like. What we need to do is we need to tune the parameter values so that these meet the requirements shown in the data sheet. The parameters that we'll be tuning are gain, time constant, and saturation, which have been parameterized using MATLAB variables. To specify the requirements on the signal, we've used Simulink Design Optimization. Here you can see the way we have graphically specified the requirements for these signals. For the 0 to 100% step, the rise time needs to be 130 seconds, and that has been specified here. The signal needs to pass through this white area for it to meet requirements. For the plus mi 90 to minus 90 step, the signal needs to go up to 90% of full signal and then uh, step down following through this white path to this range over here. If I plot the current response, we'll see how our current results look. And we can see that they don't match very well with the requirements. This one is too slow and has too much overshoot and we can see that this one does not meet the rise time. So now we need to let Simulink Design Optimization find the right parameters for us. If I go to Optimization Tuned Parameters, we'll see the variables that are being tuned. Saturation, gain, and the time constant. For each of these, we've set a minimum value, so the value is not permitted to go below that value. That would be unrealistic. By pressing on the Play button, we'll start the optimization. You can see how the optimization is progressing in this window. We have indications as to how many simulations have run and what the cost function is. So we can see that the simulation is running. Sometimes Simulink Design Optimization will try values that are non-physical. So we're going to have it ignore those errors, no, trusting that it will come back to realistic values. The simulation is continuing, and we can see each time these scopes blink, Simulink Design Optimization has tried a new parameter set after it tries a, a, a new parameter, it compares that to the constraints that we have defined to see if it is making an improvement or is making the result worse. And then based on that, it will come up with a new set of values to try. So you can see that this simulation is, this optimization is progressing rather quickly. Even if I knew exactly which parameters I wanted to test, it would take me longer to set up the values, run the simulation, evaluate the results, come up with a new value, and then rerun the simulation. We can see that even after this short period of time, the response is actually doing quite well. We're doing, we're very close to getting to meeting the requirements specified in the data sheet. Using Simulink Design Optimization, it was much easier to specify this requirement as well, as we can see graphically what it should look like. In this example, we've only set up two constraints, but it's possible to set up additional constraints as well, depending on what requirements you need to meet. We can see that the optimization is now complete, and if we look here, we can see that it did manage to find an optimal solution that meets the requirements that we had. And we can see how, many, uh, how long it took to do this. Again, to do this by hand would take much longer. If I clear the plots and then plot the current response, we can see that the simulation results now meet the requirements specified in the data sheet. Using the optimization algorithms in Simulink Design Optimization made it very easy to meet those requirements.